Hey guys, it's Danny. Today is the 1st of August. Oh wow, where did the summer go? Well, I don't know where it went, but today it is time to recap the orchids that we had in bloom for the month of July. Now, some of these orchids have faded before their time for one reason or another, and some of them I managed to get footage of, but some, well, they don't really look all that awesome anymore. So keep that in mind, some will not look spectacular due to the fact that they might be recovering or I just forgot to film them. <laughs> so that's it, let's get to the first orchid that is not in bloom anymore, and this is the Selagene Usitana. The Selagene Usitana is my favorite Selagene, mind you I only saw two in my life. <laughs> So between the two, I do prefer this one. As you can see, the flower spike is dried. Um, she was suffering from dehydration. Semi-hydro didn't do it for her, so now she is in a self-watering pot. But she will be transferred to a better mask because these little holes, yeah. There is a major difference between these masks and the ones that don't have any holes. Those ones perform better because they keep moisture in. This one is uh, kind of dry. Anyway, let's get back to the Usitana. She was in bloom and I did manage to film her a little bit. She only produced one bloom and then the flower spike kind of faded and that is that. But I do have more footage with her if you've never seen her and it looks intriguing. Check the description down below, you'll see a video in which I talk a little bit more about it. She produces pendant flower spikes and pendant blooms that are sequential and have the most wonderful color pattern, at least in my opinion. The sepals and petals are whitish greenish while the lip is a really nice leathery brown orange. It looks like leather. So yeah, now it's next year sadly, so fingers crossed I'll do a better job. But I I think she will actually enjoy better this system than the semi-hydro. Semi-hydro was good last year, but in the meantime she grew, she produced more roots, she actually has a ton of roots now, and the little reservoir of the semi-hydro was just not enough. Next orchid we had in bloom is all dried up now, but fear not, I did make a separate video for it. It's the Catacetum Piliatum Pierre Red cross with Expansum. Just like the other Piliatum cross that I have, the flowers still didn't last all that long, but they did last a little bit longer than the previous one. However, this orchid has a little bit of an unfortunate habit. It spits out pollen as you're looking at it. You don't really have to do anything, you look at it, spits out pollen. And of course, the flowers just fade. So overall, I think I did enjoy it for almost a week or so, maybe a little less in its full glory, but the flowers were really, really beautiful. I found it to be worth it and I really loved the fragrance that just remind me of herbal tea, which is weird to say because teas are made of herbs, but it had a calming scent to it. I really enjoyed it. Next up, an orchid that we still have in bloom. This is a no ID red cat lad. This is how I always called it, and I have it for four years or so. It's one of my favorite cat layers scent wise. All these years, I told you that to me it smells like clothing softener. Well, after having freesias in the terrace last year, I can tell you it kind of smells like freesias, but a very, very sweet version of that. It is very flowery, very, very beautiful. Pretty noticeable, but not overpowering. You don't really feel it in the growth space, but if you go near this area, you can definitely sense it. I find it not very striking, to be fully honest with you, except for the lip, but the fragrance absolutely makes it one of my very favorite Catlias. And too bad it's a no ID, and I know you guys tried to identify it and you sent me some IDs, but I checked them out and it doesn't really look like this one. And it's totally fine if you want to go for that particular one because of the looks, but here's the problem. If the ID is wrong, the fragrance might not be there. So it's like the case with the Princess Jackie. There are many, many white cat layers that look like it. Even a Valkyriana can look like it, although it produces flowers from the base. The problem is the fragrance. We can put an ID on it and yes, visually it looks the same, but the fragrance might not be there. And it just so happens that with some orchids, some Catlias in particular, the fragrance is the best thing about it, not necessarily the colors. So I hope you can take a visual picture of it. And if you ever see it in the store, just try to give it a sniff. Hopefully it will smell. It's one of my favorite fragrances and it's not a typical Catlia fragrance, not like lilies or something. It, it is really, really different. Next up, we had a Paphiopetalum in bloom. This is a multifloral called Judge Philip. It is actually a hybrid of the Paphiopetalum philippinensis, which we saw in bloom a couple of months ago, actually. And this orchid had a few more flowers, but they faded away. It started to bloom last month, I think, at the beginning, and I just waited for the flower spike to be completely open. And I blew it. <laughs> so yeah, 
It used to have two more flowers, you can see there, but they're kind of fading. He's left with only two more. These ones fade in order of opening. So the next one to fade will be this one, and the last one will be this flower. But I suspect it's gonna happen further in the month, not right now, because these ones, or at least this one, opened recently. It is a beautiful, wild-looking multifloral, and if you don't know too much about them, check the description down below. Again, I do have more information on multifloral paths. It is the very first time it blooms for me. I have this orchid for about a year now, and it's doing wonderful. It's one of those orchids that just doesn't fuss and it's weird coming from a paphiopetalum, right? Judge Philip is definitely an easy going orchid but he's a big boy. These types of paths are actually pretty wide. They're not tall but they're absolutely wide. I think this one has almost 40 centimeters in diameter and I'm gonna put the conversion to inch on the screen just so everybody understands. It's uh, longer than my forearm, so yeah, you kinda need to allocate a lot of space for this guy, but if you really like these types of paths, oh, he's so wonderful, absolutely adore him and I absolutely recommend him. Next up, we have one of this month's queens, absolute queens. This is the beautiful Moltonia Sunset with three flower spikes, well, two and a half. That one comes from a tinier growth, you can see. I'm surprised it bloomed actually, but it created a tiny spike here as well. But the main two spikes are looking absolutely wonderful. And excuse the mess you see on the background. I'm currently redoing my shelves. I always seem to redo the shelves, but look at her. She looks absolutely wonderful. Now, this is towards the ending of the blooms and you can see that beautiful pink is kind of starting to fade away. This one is completely white, this flower. This is the latest one and she still has some pink to it. So sadly, this one doesn't really hold on to her color as well. There's also a bit of variety with this particular one. You can have the luck to actually obtain a sunset which has a lot of purple on the lip. It also has to do with the temperature. In cooler temperatures, at least this is my opinion, it seems to bloom with more purple on the lip. And in warm temperatures, it looks like it looks now. But I really, really don't mind it. Just look at that beautiful yellow. It's so striking. It's such a beautiful yellow. Now, this orchid was featured this month in that luck type of video, how much luck plays into the hobby and sometimes it does. This is the first flowering in my care and I just had the luck to just purchase a very healthy and very vigorous individual. This is a very vigorous hybrid if you have the luck to purchase it in very, very good condition. There are a few individuals that if they have secondary issues, they won't be vigorous. I find it to be a stunning orchid, easy to care for, even for beginners. There is no fragrance on mine. Some people suggest that it might have a fragrance. I don't sense anything, uh, but yet again, you might be lucky to actually get a fragrant individual. Next up, two orchids that were purchased around the same time with the other Miltonia, but they were just not in as good of a condition. They appear in that video as well. First of all, the Miltonia Regnelli Hybrid. I'm not entirely sure if it is actually a variety or a hybrid of it. It was sold as a Regnelli Hybrid by Catacetum 2, and he is known to mislabel orchids sometimes, but I do think he got it right this time. It looks almost identical to the Regnelli, so maybe it is a variety or a hybrid. As you can see, it does really look like the Miltonia sunset, doesn't it? Well, the lip is a lot more purple and the petals and sepals are not yellow, but shape-wise it does really look like the sunset. It doesn't have a fragrance once again, at least not a perfumey one, but I absolutely love this contrast and I absolutely love the fact that this color is muted. I do like very fleshy colors, who doesn't like them? But sometimes having muted color just, you know, adds a sense of classiness, in my opinion, to flowers and everything. So I absolutely don't mind muted colors on orchids and I find this particular Miltonia absolutely gorgeous from this point of view. The coloring is just straight up my alley. Um, but the orchid herself, as you can see, she will have better days in the future. Right now, she is just pulling through. I have a lot of crinkliness in the leaves, but now this orchid is actually very well rooted. So I'm expecting great things for her in the future and for now, I will just have to do with the tiny little flowers she put out for me this time, but I'm not sad about it. I absolutely love this little girl. And speaking about poor shape, this is the one in the poorest shape of all, but the one that made the best recovery in my opinion. So I'm gonna show you how the orchid looks like. The growths that it came with are in the back, 
and they had no roots and this orchid was a little bit finicky and you can see the new growth is spotted and everything it just doesn't look good well in the meantime she produced roots you can see the pseudobulbs are plump now she's growing a new growth here and look at this growth in the back it started with issues but then it started to grow perfectly fine this is what happens when you create roots and you get proper hydration and nutrients and sometimes you cannot really do anything about it but just wait as you can see the flowers took a little bit of a toll that's okay I'm willing to wait for this orchid because she is actually special she looks like the Moltonia sunset doesn't she well I don't think she is because she never ever had any hint of pink or purple on the lip she's just a Miltonia with a white lip a little bit of a cascade and really nice again very flashy yellow sepals and petals and I purchased it last year and ever since then she grew this uh, new growth which doesn't look so bright <laughs> and I was growing another set of new growths but they already look better than the previous ones really curious to know what this one is and hopefully from now on she's gonna do a lot a lot better but who's up for some Phalaenopsis orchids? Yes, we had both of these beautiful iconic summer bloomers, the Bellina and the Violacea, and I actually did make a video about them. Check it down below. First of all, the Bellina, she is my trusty Bellina that I have for three or four years already. And you can see the wounds of the past. Anyway, what was surprising this month is that she bloomed with two blooms at once. She never did this. Whenever a new bloom would open, the other one would fall. But she's been like this for about a week already. And this flower, which was the first one to open, doesn't show signs of falling. And I do have another bud developing. So yeah, that's pretty great. I think she's actually doing okay. So I won't insist on the Bellina. You might already know her. If you don't, check the description down below. I have a bigger video about her. She's wonderfully fragrant, so I'm always nostalgic when I see her in bloom. And here we have her just as famous uh, cousin, the Phalaenopsis Violacea, with one bloom open and more buds on the way. This is the very first time this record reblooms for me. I purchased her last year and she has a wonderful fragrance as well it's very very sweet very syrupy a little bit cinnamony like but the cinnamon oil type of fragrance wonderful surprise and the strain that i have is a variety indigo crossed with a variety red there are many varieties of this orchid as you will see if you just google them i always waited for a good one <laughs> so i think this is one of them but i'm always on the lookout at least with the Bellina and violacea for special hybrids i really want to get the the um, Bellina blue and the Violacea blue. Don't imagine they're blue, they're kind of purple, but in the hobby we call the cold purple color as blue. Another surprise this month that is now fading away is a Miltoniopsis orchid. Oh yes, I had a Miltoniopsis in bloom, in wonderful bloom I might add. This is what I believe to be a hybrid of the Miltoniopsis phalaenopsis. It's not a hybrid, has nothing to do with the phalaenopsis, that's how the species is called, and this one is not the species. I do think it is a hybrid, it just has many characteristics of that particular species, but don't take it as that, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway. She was in bloom this month, had a wonderful scent, and I really loved the display. It had a total of six flower spikes or seven. The flowers were kind of tiny, but it's okay. It's the first time it reblooms for me, and the fact that it has tiny blooms pales in comparison to the fact that it's still alive. Me and Miltoniopsis figure that. But anyway, I'm happy to have it, so I'm hopeful that she will do better from now on. But yeah, I guess it's a good start to have blooms from a Miltoniopsis in the middle of summer here in Cyprus. On the terrace, we have two more orchids in bloom. First of all, a Dendrobium phalaenopsis type or Bigibum type. This is the beautiful Snow Jade. He has been in bloom for a couple of weeks already, so the flowers are slightly dusty. That's one of the inconveniences of growing orchids outside. The flowers can get dusty, and if you want to spray them with the hose, you risk botrytis. I didn't want to risk that. So there we have it. But it is the very first time it blooms for me. I purchased this guy last year or so. He's one of the discounted IKEA orchids and he had a massive evolution and the flower spike this year looks really really good I really like him there is no fragrance to this particular one but the flowers are pretty delicate they have that beautiful pinkish hue on the lip and the flowers are just this buttery white that I really like they're not stark white and as I told you in my previous videos these orchids tolerate the Sun and the heat very very well so from now on they're gonna be outside in the warm months 
And the last orchid is a Brassia hybrid. This is Brassara mivada. I'm not sure if currently she is classified as an Alessara. She might be. And I think this orchid will actually go inside. She doesn't really appreciate the heat all that much. She could use a little bit more water, so I am bringing her inside. And as you can see, I'm not catching the blooms in their full glory. The lip is kind of already starting to fade away. Uh, but the flowering was pretty poor this year compared to the one she had last year, so I'm suspecting the outside experience was not very positive for the surrogate. So she's gonna come into the greenhouse and that is that. At least we tried. As I told you in the previous videos, I don't think Oncidiums can tolerate the heat in my climate all that well. And that has been it for this month. I shall remind you that down below in the description you have a poll. You can actually vote for your favorite. And at the end of the year, I'm gonna gather all of these votes. We're gonna vote again and we're gonna declare the Orchid of the Year. It's a sort of popularity contest. So down below you'll find this poll. You can vote for your favorite one if you'd like. And of course in the description, like always, you'll find the names of these orchids if you wanna copy paste them and Google them and find out more about these orchids. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching hope you've enjoyed this and if you did you know the drill give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos tutorials uh, orchids in bloom q a and all that fun stuff and if you'd like youtube to notify you whenever i upload a new video just turn on notifications for my channel and with that said i'll see you guys next time bye